In this session, we'll be looking at different deployment patterns for WS2 API Manager. We'll touch upon subjects such as centralized versus distributed deployment and also look at scalability and performance in a deployment context. Before looking into deployment patterns of WS2 API Manager, it is important to have a clear understanding of the main components of it. It's important to mention that WS3 API Manager is a product made up of a componentized architecture where each component handles a specific API management logic. The two components, Publisher and the Developer Portal, make up the so-called management plane, our two web portals. API Publisher is for API designers and product managers, and the Developer Portal is for API consumers. The key manager and the traffic manager are together form the control plane. Key manager relating to security of APIs and the traffic manager relating to access control and throttling. The gateway and the micro gateway fall under data plane, which makes up the components that handle the API calls at runtime together with policy enforcement and mediation. Finally, the analytics component gathers events from gateway at runtime and summarizes it and makes them available via dashboards uh, for business insights. These components can be grouped in different patterns, formulating different deployment patterns. They can be grouped together in one single physical machine or partially grouped or fully segregated to form a fully distributed deployment. This opens up a lot of possibility for deployment patterns. When it comes to a distributed deployment architecture, it's important to have a clear understanding of interfaces between the components that interact. For example, it's important to know that the publisher sends the API artifacts to the gateways and also publishes traffic policies to the traffic manager. Gateway may need to interact with the key manager for security checks and traffic manager to enforce throttling policies at runtime. If analytics is enabled, Gateway also publishes runtime events to the analytics component. In order to define the best deployment pattern for, for a specific use case, there are a set of business and technical requirements which must be considered. First of all, probably the most important is the expected load or traffic in terms of API calls per unit of time, which has to be achieved. Both average and peak traffic details have to be considered. Moreover, the average message size and whether or not mediations are required are important factors to consider as well. This should be considered along with the expected traffic uh, should lead to correct sizing of the number of gateways and the, the other components. High availability is always recommended. Even for a minimum viable deployment, high availability should be considered. The needed number of gateways are analyzed against the performance tests of the gateway. What level of scalability is needed is another element to be considered. Whether or not there will be a sudden increase in the traffic uh, happens should be known. In that case, for how long? Will it just be for a while or will it sustain for days? With these details, the ideal pattern may vary. In the same way, the security requirements and also the budget can drive the deployment choices as an increase in the number of instances may impact on the total cost of ownership of the API management platform. When it comes to planning the correct number of API gateways, key managers and traffic managers, uh, which are the runtime components, uh, it is possible to count on the API performance benchmarks, uh, which are publicly available in WS2 website, as well as in the GitHub. There you can find the tested performance with different variables, such as the number of concurrent clients, backend server delays, message sizes, etc. For example, if your requirement is to achieve 200 transactions per second or API calls per second and the estimated message size to flow through the API manager is 10 kilobytes, 
And if the backend server delay is negligible and you do not need mediations or any, any orchestrations to happen within the gateway, you can see the performance test report that a gateway under these conditions can bear up to 100 transactions per second or API calls per second. Hence, in this scenario, you will need two gateways minimum. Or going by uh, the principle of N plus one, uh, you may need to con consider having three gateways in these conditions. Let's start to see the mostly used deployment patterns. And uh, we won't be discussing the simplest of all, uh, which is the all-in-one single instance model as it is not recommended for mission critical uh, production deployments uh, you can use that for local testing so even in a, a development environment uh, is fine for mission critical scenarios instead we will uh, start with the all-in-one in high availability model commonly known as the pattern one with this all the components of the api manager are run in a single instance single JVM which is duplicated for high availability purposes to be working with this configuration and all the other patterns uh, we also need a load balancer in front of the instances uh, and a mechanism uh, to synchro synchronize runtime data that's located in specific directories in the file system analytics eventually uh, will also be clustered in, in most of the cases contains a worker and a dashboard component uh, which is shown as a single instance in this picture this approach uh, requires only two nodes of all-in-one api manager uh, excluding the analytics is highly available and highly performant uh, up to 4000 api calls per second in, in in the most favorable conditions of one kilobyte messages and no delay in server and no mediations and so forth so this is a great pattern for simple use cases and it's, it's also easy to set up. However, there are some downsides to having this pattern. This pattern does not scale horizontally, which means you can't simply add a node if it needs to be scaled. And that's because some API manager components such as the traffic manager are inherently non-scalable. And with this pattern, you also cannot achieve the basic separation of concerns in the sense that data flows are running on the same instances as runtime, web portal, uh, in the management plane, security, traffic management, all are running together. And this means this pattern is not also friendly with network. In fact, you can't segregate the different components in different network segments. And if this is required as per security assessment, you cannot do that with this pattern. So that's another concern uh, with this pattern. Let's move on to another pattern. A possible evolution of the pattern one uh, we have seen in the previous slide consisting of separating the gateways uh, from the rest of the components. Um, and leading to the deployment that you see in this particular picture. So gateway is separated out from the all-in-one API manager. In addition to the same level of availability and performance of the pattern one, this model is little more scalable. Uh, as, in, as in case of an increase in traffic, you can simply add more gateways. So this is particularly true when self-contained access tokens are used for authentication and authorization uh, which means uh, in in that particular case the gateways have no dependency with other components especially with the key manager at runtime because the token is verified uh, within the gateway itself as as it will be analyzing the self-contained token self-contained tokens are available in ws2 api manager from version 3.0 onwards this pattern, this pattern achieves a level of scalability, but at some point, gateways alone cannot scale as well. It may require the components to catch up with the number of gateways. So it cannot scale uh, only with the gateways. So thus this pattern will hit its limits sooner if gateways are scaled frequently. For self-contained token validation, 
Gateway doesn't have to connect to key manager for key validation. In this case, it can freely scale without the key manager. However, with OO 2.0 or PAC tokens, there is a connection with the key manager because Gateway will have to introspect the token against the key manager. This pattern can achieve scalability of Gateway as well as the key manager. As you can see, the Gateway is separated from the all-in-one component and the key manager is also separated from the all-in-one component. However, with this approach, you can, you can still have a traffic bottleneck due to the fact that traffic manager can scale. Moreover, with uh, gradually separating the number of instances uh, uh, in, in this scenario, the machines or the instances also scale, which may require powerful hardware to back it. So that's something to keep in mind. Finally, uh, for full flexibility and scalability, uh, you may consider the so-called fully distributed deployment known as pattern 3. So in comparison uh, to the previous patterns, uh, you have a complete separation of concerns between all components in this pattern, uh, undoubtedly uh, having potential advantages as the components do not interfere with each other. So far, uh, we have spoken about scalability of individual components and indeed it is a key factor uh, that has to be considered. You as an architect may be asked if and how the platform scales. So it's worth mentioning that uh, we are talking here about the horizontal scaling. The components that need to scale are those that are directly impacted by the potential rise of API traffic. So those are the runtime components and they are the gateway, the key manager and the traffic manager in general. The admin and the design time components such as the publisher and the developer portal typically do not need to scale as they are not impacted by the traffic load. The gateways can scale when the traffic grows, meaning that you can easily increase the number of gateways in your deployment. You can also easily increase the number of key managers in parallel uh, to the number of gateways, but only if you use OPAC tokens, which means uh, tokens whose validity, validity is verified with a call to the key manager. In that case, consider that a key manager can serve up to two gateways. So in general, if you look at the gateways to key manager ratio, it's two to one. Also, when you size the number of uh, key managers, you have to consider the number of final users and the expiration time of the tokens as well, as these two factors impact the number of token invocations. So with higher expiration time and gateway token caching enabled, key manager can sustain higher gateway nodes. The traffic manager, the WSO2 lab tests have revealed traffic manager can roughly handle up to 10 gateways. If by any chance you need to exceed that number, that means if you want to have more than 10 gateways in your deployment, you can add more traffic manager, but be aware that it can be beneficial only if you uh, statically partition the total of your gateways to different traffic managers. So in a, in a deployment context, uh, one important topic that always should be addressed when it comes to uh, all the distributed deployment that we have seen thus far is the artifact synchronization uh, between different nodes. There are two main artifacts that have to be synchronized in, in a WSO2 API manager deployment. The first is the API definitions uh, between the two or more nodes of the gateways. And the second is the throttling policies between the two or more nodes of the traffic manager. Whatever the deployment synchronization is, WSO recommends three options for executing the artifact synchronization, even if there may be more. The first two are based on the assumption the file system is used, and they are the number one, the rsync. Uh, each node has its own file system where the artifacts are stored and one node will be selected as the master and a synchronization mechanism, particularly our sync kind of uh, mechanism in Linux uh, can be set up uh, to 
sync that file system storage contents uh, between multiple nodes. The second option is to use a shared file system such as a network uh, file storage uh, and, and mount those locations where the gateway stores those uh, runtime artifact files. The third option is only available uh, from the API manager 3.2 onwards and consists of an internal artifact synchronization mechanism which avoids the need of a file system based option uh, such as the rsync or NFS. So this method involves an extension based mechanism uh, for publisher to publish artifacts elsewhere with a label and gateway will fetch runtime details by subscribing to the traffic manager and filtering the API label and then fetching it from the location where the publisher published the API. So I'll wrap up this session with one last scenario of deployment. It may be requested uh, to have API manager deployed in a DMZ for performance reasons. Otherwise, the load balancer will have to cross a firewall to access the gateways. It must be said that the only component that can be possibly deployed in the DMZ zone are the gateways, mainly because it does not connect to the API manager database as the other components do. So this approach may reduce uh, the need for cross firewall connections. However, it is worth to mention that DMZ to LAN connections must be open if external users need to connect to the developer portal or to the key manager if user authentication is requested. For example, with the O2 authorization code grant type. Also, in case of multi-tenancy, the gateway needs a connection to the database. That's an architectural uh, aspect of W3 API Manager. So in this case, the deployment of gateway in DMZ is not recommended unless you want to create a connection from DMZ to database directly or worse, to move the DB uh, to the DMZ zone, which is not wise. And that's all I have got for today and I, I will leave at this point and thank you for watching.